Hey Leo, this is your general tarot reading for Leo, Sun, Moon and Ascendant or Rising Sign for the month of July. July, hmm, July. July means that for some of you it's your birthday. So fireworks please, bring out the band, wheel out that oversized cake. <clears throat> happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Leo who were born in July. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, July babies. It is going to be kicking off for you this month. But, 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 there's a lot of good things happening, but we have to get over one big last hurdle. And you're saying, what? <laughs> you have to jump through hoops for me to get to that giant size birthday cake. Is that what you're saying? A little bit, but it's, it's good, Leo. And it's really super, super powerful. Why? Well, apart from the fact that this is kind of lots of retrograde stuff happening here and there's a mercury <coughs> mercury retrograde <coughs> we pretend that didn't happen and there is also the big uh, eclipses sorry <laughs> yeah there's the solar eclipse happening on july 2nd new moon in cancer in the 12th house but there is the big daddy the big lunar eclipse happening on july 16th which is the full moon lunar eclipse in capricorn in your sixth House. So Leo, let's get started. Let's shuffle the cards while I explain what the energies are like this month that you may feel as the first card comes out. Nice. Um, we're going to skip forward to that big lunar eclipse. It's all about you now really ending something that was quite hard work for you. A lot of hard work for you. And that was sixth house stuff, which was a lot to do with maybe toxic people. Toxic situations, toxic work environments, toxic lovers, people coming at you with their criticism, always feeling that you had to be extra switched on and on guard in case somebody would point out a flaw in you or criticize some of the very, very hard work that you were doing and not just hard work that you were doing for yourself, but hard work that you were doing maybe even sometimes to please other people. And this is a moment where it really turns around. It, it, it's a moment where you have that kind of, I get it, I don't mind putting the hard work in, but there's a clear separation between me working hard because I feel, I don't know, under the spotlight a bit, that people might think I'm not working hard enough, or just working hard because I enjoy it and because I can find myself in this hard work. I can find a better path for my life through the hard work I've been doing over the last year and a half. You've learned a lot, Leo, but more than anything, this month is going to come in sharp where you're learning to laugh so much off, so especially other people's criticism, especially other people's judgment, their toxicity, and maybe even personal attacks. Laugh it off because as Aristotle said he said there's only one way to avoid criticism don't do anything don't say anything and don't be anything <laughs> but you can't avoid it so in other words you can't avoid criticism so at least learn now this month through the lunar eclipse to take your ego let's say ego out of the criticism and kind of be non-judgmental about it if somebody comes and attacks you with a personal attack, with their toxicity, with their over-criticism of what you're doing, then just remove yourself and say, that's their problem, not mine. Really, when they judge me like that, they're judging themselves. It's nothing to do with me because here I am working hard, getting my life together with my kind of nose to the grindstone and they don't really get to judge me, get to criticize me. So that's one big thing, but more than that, because of the eclipse, the solar eclipse in the 12th house for you, this is a moment where you lose and surrender those critic bitches, <laughs> but start to find yourself again. It's like I am no longer getting lost in their opinion of me. I am now going to get lost in rediscovering who I am. You've got all the energy in cancer season in the 12th house of releasing, surrendering, yeah, and then focusing on getting lost in order to find yourself. Because, I mean, you could have gone through the last year and a half of really killing yourself with self-doubt, 
only observing your flaws, only listening to the things that people said were bad about you. Bullshit. You've done it. You've learned it. You've mastered it. You're over it. And now you've learned and will learn with the North Node in the 12th house and all the energy focus there this month is that self-doubt and self-criticism kills more dreams than failure ever could. So you're getting lost. You're getting lost to find yourself. And that's true. And you may have already lost a lot, Leo. You could have really suffered with your health, sixth house. You could have lost your job or had great difficulties with your co-workers. You could have lost love, relationships, anything like that. But this month you're learning, if I can lose all that, there is one thing I'm absolutely determined never to lose. And that is myself. Because if I lose myself, then I've truly lost something here. So it's about going back and finding yourself and repairing and fixing probably certain things that you've tried to run away from or try to avoid or try to gloss over or cover over. It's like get your sleeves up now, love, and get your fight back. I always tell you this, Leo, get that Leo force back. And go in and fight your corner. Standing up for yourself doesn't mean you're a bitch or an asshole. Standing up and defending I deserve a good relationship isn't about you being some kind of royal kind of snob. This is about I deserve this. I deserve this. And I'm going to have to start, you know, bearing my claws a bit more. I'm always encouraging you to do that, Leo, because I feel that you felt that huge pressure under other people watching you and saying, I wonder what Leo will do now. And you determined to develop this good, kind part of yourself, which is there already by the bucket load. But the sixth house is all about being of service to other people. So you were trying to do the right thing by other people, trying to be kind, trying to be generous, trying to, you know, be all things to all people. Bullshit! Let it go! You can't. You can't be all things to all people because all people have their own problems and a lot of people try to project their problems onto you. you. You can't own that. You can't own it. Own your ground and find yourself again. That's what you can own. So that's the big, big, big theme here, you know. And not to be afraid of your flaws, Leo. We all have them. Stop trying to hide your flaws and imperfections because it's those very imperfections that are you. It reminds me of Barbara Streisand. For years and years, she had all that talent, but she was so conscious of her nose. And she wanted only to be lit a certain way and constantly trying to find the right angle so people wouldn't notice her nose. Until one day she said, oh my God, this is me. This is the best part of me. And every single iconic photograph of Barbara Streisand after that is in profile where she actually shows off the one thing that she tried to hide and conceal and cover over. And it became hers. She owned it. And it was her way of saying, bitches, you can't judge me and try to point at me and laugh at me and bring me down because I'm owning this. So there is something in your life somewhere along the line, Leo, be it a physical thing, a relationship thing, work thing, something. You can't hide it anymore. Own it. And it will become your power. It will become your power. So it's very, it is very powerful in general. And of course it is coming up to your birthday soon where you'll be starting all over again and moving on in a whole new direction. Of course you are. Yeah, letting something go. Let it go. Let that toxic relationship go. If you've tried and tried and it's still not working, let it go. Stop trying to be a martyr. Stop trying to be a savior by being kind to toxic people. They're adults. Let them off. Let them figure it out. If they're dragging you down and draining you, not your problem. Let them fix it. You get on with being Leo, you know. Because July 1st, Mars is in Leo, in the first house, giving you finally that confidence to say, you've held me back. You made me feel small. You made me feel like I failed. You did this to me. You didn't support me. You made me feel less. And although we might always say other people can't make you do that, you know, that comes from within. In this instance, I think other people did show true colours that tried to make you less, jumped over you, kind of brought you down, made themselves big, 
made you try to feel small. This is where Mars comes in and says, Leo, I have all my weapons here. What do you want? <laughs> How do you want to handle this? I am at your service. Where do you want to begin? Do you want the right words to challenge somebody? Do you want the right attitude to challenge somebody? Do you want the right confidence, Mars, to challenge somebody? Do you need the confidence to say, I'm done with challenging everybody. Now I want to focus on my dreams and finding myself again. Mars is saying, well, this is my bag of tricks. What do you want? And I will give it to you for your birthday as your birthday present. See, Mars is always first. He's always the early arriver. <laughs> He's arrived first and said, right, take your pick. What do you want? It's all yours, baby. It's all yours. I can help you get through anything. So that's very strong. He's building up your confidence again. Now, Mercury does retrograde this month, and he begins his retrograde journey on July 9th in Leo. So it's saying, Leo, you've got to somewhat, before you go forward and lose yourself, you've got to maybe retrace some steps and reclaim some power in some situation that has disempowered you. It's time to go back with your ally Mars, who rules fellow far sign Aries, to go back and say, where can I pick up the broken pieces and gather them up and say, these are mine and I'm taking these broken pieces and I'm going to be proud of them, not try to hide them and I'm going to move forward and show them off. So there's something about that, going back to reclaim your identity. But Mercury then goes further, further back into the 12th house. And the 12th house is where there's, everything is lost, forgotten, goodbye, sayonara bitch, bye. So it's like you carry some of the unwanted trash by July 19th, those toxic bitches, toxic situations and say, 12th house where everything gets lost, forgotten, and I never have to deal with it again, take that. Go, bye, I don't want to see you again. So you're being given so many gifts. Even Mercury is handing you that gift of rediscovering yourself and emptying out the trash, Leo. Emptying out the trash. And you know what that trash is. And you know how you've been a martyr to other people's trash. Stop. 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 For your birthday gift, the universe is handing you everything you need to make that shit stop. Now, July 23rd, Sun and Leo, yay, in the first house. This is where the Sun, your ruler, comes back home. Home. It's home. Every year it arrives back home into Leo and it is so happy back at home with you. You are shining, you are successful, you are optimistic, your energy is back in force and more likely your energy is back in force by then because you've cleaned up so much shit by then. Perfect, perfect. July 28th, then the goddess of love who kind of lounges in and lingers in looking all beautiful Venus into Leo in the first house and says, I love what you've done here. I love this space, it's beautiful. You've cleaned up so much, it's fresh, it's bright, the sun is shining, let me stay for a while. And she is coming in with great love vibes and bringing love to the good relationships in your life, making peace with people. And for the singles, maybe bringing in a new love. So it's so powerful, Leo. I, can't, I really can't tell you, this is just the big one for you. This is where the big turnaround comes where you find yourself and heal something that you've tried to hide. I want to recommend something to you before I pull out the rest of the cards here, Leo. Um, for those of you who have Netflix, now I don't usually recommend things, but I'd love you to watch something if you can. Netflix, there is a TV show called Chef's Table. And the latest episodes, uh, season six is the latest. And I've watched the first one. So Chef's Table, season six, episode one, uh, about a beautiful woman called Mashama Bailey. I hope I've pronounced her name right. And she, her journey is, for me, summing up your journey this month, where she has so much skill, so much talent, so much going for her. But she has to double back on a very, very difficult part of her life, her family's life, her ancestor's life, cancer season, family ancestors, to bring back power into a place where her ancestors were very disempowered and she becomes the master of what maybe she could have tried to run away from and she becomes the boss 
in full power of healing something. And she had to lose herself completely in order to find her dream and find herself. I know it's a, it's a story told through food, but it's about business people and it's about their journey. So Chef's Table, season six, episode one. If you watch it, leave down below in the comments if you can kind of see how this will be relating to your life. So anyway, anyway, I just want to give you, I'm so excited for you. And that I, I know these have to be kind of shorter videos now, but I want to just tell you all the good things that are happening. So let's get to, this card flew out. Oh my God, this is such huge energy, force, power, drive, motivation, lighting up your dreams. This is it, it's coming back, lighting up passion in your life all over again. Remembering your passion, remembering your fire and being lit. Ah, yeah, yeah. But there's still some tricky business, I know that, but you're getting the power to deal with that tricky business. And you're taking that big leap of faith. Oh, Leo, I love it, I love it. I love it. Two more cards, my beauty. Two more pre-birthday cards for you. Let's choose them. They're not leaving. This one pushed itself out, so we'll choose that. Another new opportunity. One last card, Leo. Come on, make it a good one for Leo's birthday. Yeah, very nice. So, Leo, finally, I'm going to bring you over to the, ta-da, birthday big overview. So, here we go, Leo. We open up with good news. Somebody is approaching you. Somebody approaching the fire king, the fire royal. Someone's approaching you with something positive, something that you really want. Maybe even an offer that changes everything. Now, that could be an offer to do with work, with love, with a new project. Just a new opportunity, but it fills you with passion. This is inspiration. This is a moment of your cup being filled up all over again and feeling like in the cups that you're more intuitive, more sensitive, more in touch with yourself. So somebody is definitely coming to show you a new way and to bring you back your power. If it's love, it's strong love. Strong, strong love. I'll try to figure out who that is. Uh, who could be bringing you love? I see strong Aquarian vibes. I see strong Scorpio vibes. I also see the fire signs, Aries, Leo and Sagittarius. Um, but we'll go through it anyway and see. But something right from the beginning of the month. Communication with somebody about a work offer that could involve you going right out of your comfort zone. Maybe having to move far away, having to pack up all your bags and say, goodbye, old life, I'm starting over and move somewhere that's more you, but more secluded. You see, it's peace, quiet, seclusion, privacy, calmness that you need now, Leo, where you're able to get on with your life without the hustle and bustle and people coming at you and go, go, go. You want something more peaceful and beautiful. And I think that's why Venus is stepping in there too towards the end of the month saying, you want something beautiful? Call me, you've got the right person. Ding dong, I'm here. What do you want to do? You want to do up your house, your home, your apartment, your garden, something, do up your life, your image, change your look, because I can make this happen for you and bring the true beauty of you out. So there's an offer, an offer of love that gives you such power. And I'm saying love, but it's it's more, for me, it feels more like doing something that you love, Fe finding yourself in a place that you love, in a, an inner place that you love. It's very, very strong and it lights you up. But here we go. This is, say, sun in Aquarius. And that's why I was wondering if there's a uh, sun, moon, or ascendant Aquarius around who is helping you or coaxing you or inviting you to come on a journey with them, go somewhere, even if it's only a vacation, but come somewhere and end that. It's almost an invitation of somebody stepping in and saying, forget everything that happened in the past, leave the past behind and start again. And I think you're gonna go for it because something has to end, a job, a relationship, a friendship, a toxic environment, a toxic community, toxic interactions with people, it has to end. Sometimes this is um, 
maybe getting a sudden illumination, a sudden realization about some communication you're having with people that just is toxic, and particularly on social media. It's time to make a big call. Go through your friends list and delete. If you've got people hanging around on your Facebook page, Instagram page that are just toxic bitches, delete them and start over. Because I feel for some of you, you might read something or see something on social media this month that just ends it for you. And maybe it's that thing, if some of you do go to watch that Chef's Table season six, episode one, there might be something in that for you that you see through media that just says, I'm ending the old way now. I know how to go. I know where I'm supposed to go. And I'm not one bit afraid. When we get the death card, never fear it. Remember, he is a noble. He's royal like you. I mean, he wouldn't have all his shining armor and his beautiful white horse and his her own heraldic flag if he wasn't a noble. And he's some powerful dude that he can come in and knock down the king and the say the belief system. He can knock it all down. This is no slouch. He can take everything and knock it down. So if you have any fear of moving away from somebody or some toxic situation, don't. Because when he shows up, he's saying, I've got your back. I mean, don't fear. Don't fear getting over something or getting through something or moving on from something. Because I will make sure that I tread a new path for you, but I also, with all the energy in the 12th house, I'm doubling back Mercury retrograde, doubling back and destroying anything that threatens your new path. So that's quite strong. But look, Leo, Leo, for the singles, and maybe even for some of the couples who are coming to the end of a relationship, and cross watchers, don't panic. This will be obvious if it's you, okay? Um, some of you are being offered new love. There is a new union with somebody. It could be a, a new friend, a new lover, uh, a new business adventure, new work atmosphere, team, whole new attitude, something that you love doing. You've been invited and coaxed and saying, come Leo, come, and you do it. And you love it. You're gonna find yourself, even from mid-month, already in a happier place. Because I do believe with the lunar eclipse this month, the full moon in Capricorn, it could get very heightened. Somebody could come again with drama, toxicity, and really push you to that point where you have to say, Mars, Mars, where are you with all your weapons? I need help. I need help. I, I can't do this on my own. And Mars is saying, well, I will help you. I will help you stand up and get the confidence needed. Another fire energy. Confidence needed. And when you have it, when you find this better situation, better environment, better relationship, and it's, it's what your soul wants. This is like a soul energy card. When you find it, you're so much happier. You see, this is a very intuitive card too. You see the cat. The cat is using it, its night vision. It can sense anybody who's approaching while the queen is able to look away and say, let my intuition see if these are toxic bitches, if these are no energy people, vampires trying to drain me. If they are, I can see you. I can see you and I'm not going to entertain you. See, my face is turned away. But if you come at me with the right energy, I will suddenly turn and look at you and I will give you my strength back and double that. Multiply strength for the thing that you are destined to do, that you're passionate to do. There's no more confusion, it seems. Something is becoming super clear and you're lighting it up. But before you're lighting it up, I do see mid-month, there's some challenge. I strongly feel it. It's somewhere to do with your work life and maybe even your home life. Some toxicity going on there with family or work and you're just striking out on your own. I told you Mars would hand you a weapon. Now, hopefully not a real weapon. We don't want to actually do any physical damage here, okay? <laughs> but Mars is handing you that weapon. And you're saying, look, this weapon is bigger than all of theirs. I can go win. And I can end some fear that other people are trying to put me down. This is sometimes the card of competition, strong competition. 
it's almost like play fighting but there's a seriousness behind it so six pounds is sometimes like that where it's subtle jabs people saying something nasty to you and saying oh you can't take a joke it's quite bullying and it's quite dark at times it's manipulative uh, if anybody is doing that to you that's quite abusive you know somebody every time you try to do something they might roll their eyes or and and you can't quite put your finger but you on it but you know that they're judging you and they'll smile and say hey what's your problem what's your problem and you're saying enough with that that is subtle shade and now that the sun is coming to me I don't do shade anymore bitch <laughs> I don't do it and I have all the strength needed to win through some competition and rise above it you see this is not so much the energy of going in on the attack this is more the energy of feeling i'm so strong in myself that i don't have to get all messy like these bitches look at them they're all fighting i'm bigger than you i'm better than you i'm more beautiful than you i'm this and that they just don't look like they have anything going they they're they're chaos they're mess but you stand alone, the universe gives you your own stick and says, here, untangle yourself from this mess and walk on into your future. Very strong. And not just walk on into your future, but take a huge leap of faith and dive right in. Don't think about it, Leo, do it. No more thinking about it. Because Mercury is, say the moon and Mercury, are, moon is where we think about things. And you've got solar eclipse now uh, in July 2nd saying I'm only thinking about losing myself jumping into my destiny 12th house where the north node of destiny is I'm jumping into my destiny where I need to be not here but there mm -hmm. and then <laughs> excuse me, the solar eclipse <clears throat> on July 16th saying I have now seen how toxic certain situations have gotten and I'm, I'm not going to think about it. I'm just jumping into it. And Mercury retrograding in Leo, then back into Cancer and saying, let's jump away from that trash and start over with the sun on my back, taking very little with me. I don't know why I get the feeling, Leo, that some of you are really doing that thing of just take what's needed and go. I'm not going to wait for this and that and this and that and wait for these people to get it together and wait for this situation to come together. Just, I'm taking what I have and I'm just going. I'm just going. Leaving that job, leaving that situation, leaving that whole nightmare thing going on there. Just pack a small bag and go. And jump into your destiny. And when you do, there's a bit of hard work that's going to be involved. Yeah, sure getting things organized, new job, strongly feel that new job, trying to think about money, things like that. But I think, Leo, you're diving in to a new space that's more you, and it's almost like, this is what I want to do. I don't mind working. I'm Leo. I'm not afraid to work. I'm not afraid to help people. I'm not afraid to get my sleeves rolled up and get stuck in. I will work as long as it takes. But I'm tired of working for people who are so ungrateful. I, I'm going to focus on working on something that gives me pleasure. And I'm, I'm going to make it right. I'm going to repair something and make it right. And this is part of my destiny. I'm going to repair my life and make it right. My relationships and make it right. I'm going to repair my career path. And make it right and in some cases I'm going to go back and find all the things that were broken wrong or flawed or criticized about me and I'm going to do that thing sweep them all up into my arm and say these are mine and I'm going to lay them all out and repair them mend them fix them until they are looking shining and new again until they are looking like something that I'm proud to display again Leo, this is fabulous and again another new opportunity where I think it's ideas, your mind is getting sharp, it's like I need to think of new things by the time the month ends. But by the time the month ends I think that some of you have to be very sharp with your communication with somebody. It's, it's almost like 
you've realized so much before this month ends that you just know exactly. See, Mara's handed you another weapon. <laughs> he said, any more? You want any more? I've got lots going on here. It's, this is sharp verbal and clarity, mind, mouth, all working in unison. And you're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need to communicate here sharp, fast, quickly, and make something happen that works for me. There's almost like the energy of when you feel things, when you make the right decisions this month based on where you want to go. It's like trust the universe because at the beginning, it'll be all very unclear. I don't know if this is going to work out. I don't know if I take that leap of faith, will it work out? I've no idea. But you have to take the leap of faith and trust because by the end of the month, it's like a great wipe down of all the things that were in your mind that bothered you and clarity comes back and you're ready to go, 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 go and communicate, communicate. And I do think before the month is out, there is some last sharp by bitch communication with somebody and it will be it, the words or how you've written it or how you say it will be so sharp it will almost cut them in two. It will be coming from your point of power and your truth and your honesty and that is always the most powerful place in all of us. We can do anything when we tap into that power but I see new beginnings Leo. Down with the old and in with the new and let everything fall by the wayside. And the strong characters this month for you are the fire signs. You have a good comrade in Scorpio, Sun, Moon or Ascendant, who's helping you, maybe a family member or somebody that's maybe part of your soul tribe, helping you clean up some things. You've got the fires, you've got Leo, fellow Leos, you've got your Aries, you've got your Sagittarians, definitely helping you, definitely. And you are taking big, bold leaps of faith. At the very end of the month, it could be, I'm feeling Aquarius, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant could be helping you to get your shit together. Now, that can work two ways. It could be you putting an Aquarius in their place, possibly. Or it could be the Aquarius that's saying, come on, Leo, you're bigger than this. You're smarter than this. Let's get it moving. Either way, they're a big catalyst for change. Leo, this is big, this is powerful, and this is where you get everything back. And this is a weird month because it will feel like everything's happening on a very subtle level and on a very empowering, personally empowering level. And it's, it's building and building and building and building until before your birthday comes, it's like, You've been waiting for me. <laughs> You've been waiting for this moment. Here I am. Here I am. Leo is back. And I'm in a playful kind of mood because I'm not so bothered by other people's criticisms. I'm just in the mood to love, to laugh, and to make my dreams come true. Leo, I love that. I just love it. Leo, I'm very happy for you. Now, you know, of course, Leo, these are the general landscape birthday cards. To get your real kind of nitty gritty detail, find out the absolute detail birthday cards, you have to come, of course, to the Vimeo readings, the deep read. They're linked down there somewhere in the description box. Come along again, Leo, and we'll open all the things out. Those of you in a relationship will find out what the heck is going on pre-birthday for you. The singles, let's see what's happening there because I do see that there's potentially something moving and shaking there for you. We're going to talk about money and career. We're going to talk about family, friends, and we'll talk about other things that we don't discuss here. Getting right into it, Leo, as you know, the deep read, link down there below, come along. My beautiful... I'm really, really happy for you and I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to leave you with all my love and a big, big, big birthday kiss, pre-birthday kiss Mwah! for you, my beautiful. Until next month, my gorgeous. Happy pre-birthday. Happy birthday. And bye.